three considerations should convince even the most skeptical Westerner of the truth of the concept of reincarnation. The first is, if your soul, your eternal individuality, apart from temporary periods of rest, continues to go on living and acting in infinity, does it not suggest itself to assume that this will happen in the foreseeable future on the planet to which you are bound for the time being on Earth? Later, higher worlds may open up to you. But for now, you have so much to learn down here that you yourself could not imagine any other place that would be better suited for your further advancement. People in their present condition are by no means outgrown of the earthly conditions and therefore not ripe for heaven or other higher worlds. Therefore, it would be simply unreasonable to move you now to any other higher level of existence. You would not find your way there and would not feel comfortable either. It is entirely in accordance with the law of goal fitness that you have to return to earth as long as you have something to learn down here. The second proof of reincarnation are memories of past lives, which many people have, for example, under hypnosis. Some remember, as is being scientifically researched, foreign languages. One or the other of you might have already noticed once or twice that you met again a related spirit, an old friend from a previous life. So Goethe says to Charlotte von Stein, Oh, you were in bygone times my sister or my wife. Especially children have memories of past lives. In their first seven years, they are still very close to the world beyond. So the memory of the past, of past lives before birth, is not yet blocked. Does not a child's mouth make known the truth when he says, in those days when I was a grown-up? Finally, only the accumulated experiences from past lives can explain why people are so different as from birth. It is quite obvious that the children bring with them from the past something of their own to earth that cannot be explained by the circumstances of their actual life. What a relief will it be for vexed parents when they realize that they are not responsible for that what their child brings with him. The child is already formed to such an extent as a personality of its own as would never be possible in the few years of his present earthly life. Smallest children of gentle parents can be true little devils or a genius 
like Mozart, who composed his first symphony at the age of eight. Let us listen to a small part of this sounding proof of reincarnation. The wisdom that speaks from these sounds can be explained neither with the musical education by the father, nor with any other circumstances of the young boy's life. Here you sense the spirit of a great master, a perfection exhibited already in childhood that can be achieved in no other way than by striving hard for many lifetimes. Do not believe in the old wife's tale that the heavenly powers pour out of a horn of plenty indiscriminately and arbitrarily talents of all kinds, regardless of the inner justification over the worthy and the unworthy. This is a poor idea. Instead, Agni Yoga says, Everything is labor and experience. One can explain the level of development of people standing higher than others only by the fact that they have advanced further than others through their own efforts in previous lives. For each of us it is possible to rise step by step through many incarnations. Begin to analyze yourself. Then you can certainly find out whether you have already been active in previous incarnations, intellectually or spiritually, in a leading position as an artist or as a craftsman. That is, did you already develop the respective qualities or not? Or do you feel an affinity to certain places, certain countries, certain personalities or certain times, then you were probably in a previous earthly life in physical contact with them. In the New Testament we find a clear reference to the reincarnation of the soul in the words of Jesus about Elias and John the Baptist. The disciples ask about the prophecy of Malachi. Will not the Lord send his messenger, the prophet Elias, before he comes to earth? Then Jesus Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Then the disciples understood that he meant John the Baptist. John the Baptist is thus Elias reappearing on earth.
and if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was far to come. Already the angel announced about John. He shall go before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elias. John is also externally described as Elias similar. The Bible thus clearly describes that the spirit of Elias continues to live and act as John the Baptist. The early Christianity has widely affirmed rebirth, in particular the great teacher Origen and the Gnostics. This doctrine was condemned as heresy only as late as the year 553 in connection with the Second Council of Constantinople. Not only theological but also secular considerations have played a role thereby. The Council itself does not express an opinion on the rebirth doctrine. This is discarded in an edict of the Eastern Roman Emperor Justinian, of which it is unclear to what extent it has ever found the consent of the Church and the Pope. The fact remains that Justinian threatened and physically mistreated the then Pope Vigilius to such an extent and so long until he yielded to his will. It is not to be overlooked that the position of the Church as a mediator of the divine grace cannot be maintained when man can approach perfection by himself through his own efforts over many lives. The argument that the doctrine of reincarnation as an Eastern concept is foreign to Western thinking is nonsensical. When the Western world view was founded by Pythagoras and Platon, reincarnation was quite naturally included. Only the Church has later removed it from there. Plato's dialogue Phaedon is entirely dedicated to the life of the soul before birth and after death. The Christian has no choice but to follow Plato's thought. If our soul is immortal, it must already have existed before we were born. At the end of the dialogue, The Republic, Plato talks about someone who was already dead, but then returned from the afterlife and reported about what he saw there. The reward for the good and the atonement of evil deeds in the upper world. The eternal law that assigns to everyone what is due to him. And the souls who after a certain period of time select for themselves a new life on earth. Socrates ends with the words, he who follows this teaching will. Preserve his soul spotless. If we, as I teach it, believe in the immortality of the soul, and its strength to survive all the evil and all the good that it encounters, then we shall, 
forever hold on to the way upwards and devote all our striving to justice and virtue. So we shall be our own and the God's friends. To this age-old wisdom we need to return. <laughs>